Well, hey everyone, how's it going? I am Brian, and today I am making this video to come clean and be honest with, with you guys about my thoughts on my Festool lineup of drills and an impact driver, and why I think that I should have spent my money elsewhere. So with that, let's get into why I'm changing my mind on my Festool drills. Okay, so I know that's probably a bit of a shocker to anyone who's been following my channel because uh, most people know that I'm a bit of a Festool junkie and I'll be the first to admit that I drank the Festool Kool-Aid and I still drink it. They make amazing tools. Uh, they're sanders, dominoes, track saws, routers, back system, tables. They're all amazing and they all and they all really make your workflow super efficient. Uh, the dust collection is amazing. They're just really good, good, good quality tools and I wouldn't, can't imagine doing any of my work without them. They truly do make the work more fun and they make your final project, I think, that much better. With that said, I wish I did not spend my money on these Festool drills. Um, as you guys know, Festool has a bit of a premium price tag and I don't think, I have not seen the return of investment for me on the price of these Festool drill, drills and impact drivers versus my, especially my Makitas and my DeWalt's. Um, they're about half the cost, essentially. And on paper, the specs are basically the same. Now I don't get into too much, you know, RPMs and impacts per minute, but I got a couple of notes here just to kind of showcase a little bit. So this is the Makita Brushless sub, uh, Compact Hammer Drill, the XPH-12. Okay, and I'm gonna compare that to the Festool uh, TID-18 Easy and the C-18 D-Handle Drill. So, the Makita drill's got 530 inch-pounds of max torque. Both of these Festool drills have 398 inch-pounds of max torque. So, obviously the Makita wins in the max torque area. I don't really care too much about that, but just in case you do, this one has a little bit more power behind it. Um, this is zero to 2000 RPMs. Both of these are zero to 1500 RPMs, and I can tell the difference with those 500 extra RPMs that I get with this Makita. That does come in handy every once in a while. Um, they're all, both of these are two speed, two speed, so you, you know, that's the same. Metal chuck, not metal chuck, whatever. Um, the clutch mechanism on, on the Festools is a little bit different than the clutch on, on all my Makitas or uh, DeWalt's any other basic common brand. The Festool, once you set your, your torque setting and you hit that, 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 that torque setting, it beeps at you. Every other drill that I've used, you, you, know, you set your clutch to, to whatever, torque, whatever setting you want it at, and when you hit that, that torque setting, it kind of ratchets, you, you, you feel it. So the difference is ratcheting sound versus an electronic beep. So I don't know if that's the extra added cost. You get a beep, I don't know. I know there's a lot more other things inside these drills, I guess, that make the price tag such a premium. Um, but again, personally, and I know this is gonna ruffle a lot of feathers because people that are invested in certain platforms, it's like you're talking about their children. But I wanted to be honest with, with my viewers and anyone who's on the fence about thinking, hmm, do I need to go buy some Festool drills? If I could go back in time, I would tell myself, no, I'm not getting the added benefit of these drills compared to every other drill that I own. So I would spend the money, looking back, I wish I would have spent the money on what I spent on these three on something else in my shop, more tools, more hand tools, whatever the case may be, I wish I would have used that money somewhere else because, and especially during my camper build, I put thousands of screws, I put six inch lags, I put finished screws, I drilled pocket holes. I did a lot of stuff with these impacts and drills and nine times out of 10, I found myself reaching for these Makitas. It wasn't intentional. I just, I started noticing, because I had a bunch of them laying around, I, I would always go look for the Makitas. Again, it wasn't intentional, but these are just probably the most comfortable that I have between my, my Makitas, my DeWalt's, my Milwaukee's. These are the most comfortable in hand. These are not uncomfortable by any means, but again, I just found myself reaching for these. And the Makita impacts, I can't quantify it, I can't prove it to you guys, but when you actually use an impact, a Makita impact, it's almost like there's a shock absorber built into it. And there might be, I don't know. But the impact of it just feels so much better than anything that I own. I just, I just like using it, it's a pleasure to use. So I just found myself using these two the most on my camper build and I put a lot of screws on that thing. 
again ranging from six inch lag bolts to one inch finish nails inside or finish screws inside so i use these a lot and i did not see any added benefit with these now when you talk about other festool tools i do see the added benefit especially like with the sanders dust collection i've never been able to dust anything inside an enclosed shop like i do here until I had my Festool dust extractors and my sanders, I could sand all day and night and not have anything on the table. They're amazing in that aspect. I don't think they're worth the price for the drills and the impact, personally. So let the, let the comments start flowing and let, you know, I'm sure I'm wrong about everything, but I've had a lot of comments over the last few months asking me on some of my other videos if I recommend Festool drills. No, I don't, with the exception of this. This is the Festool CXS. This is my most used tool in my entire shop. I absolutely love this thing. I've done a couple of videos on it. I've compared this to the Milwaukee 4 one install driver. Um, this thing I do recommend if you can find it now. I think they're pretty much sold out for the past year due to you know the, the supply chain issue and COVID and all that good stuff. But I will recommend this all day long. I have three of these. And I use all three of them, believe it or not. And this, this is the one Festool drill that I highly, highly recommend you guys look into. It's not for putting six inch lags through. I've had a couple people say, well, it's just not powerful enough for me. It's not meant to be a powerful tool. It is a install driver. It's for finish work, it's for cabinetry, it's for delicate work, things where you don't wanna strip screws or get, you know, get off the screw and damage a, a, a piece of cab, whatever the case may be. That's not what this little guy's for. This is, this is delicate finish work, but it's still got enough power behind it to do what you want it to do in most cases. And it's absolutely dead on comfortable. This is the best thing that I have in my shop almost, and I use it pretty much daily. So I'm excluding the Festool CXS for my recommendation for not buying Festool drills. Buy this guy, absolutely. But everything else, if I'm honest with myself and I'm honest with, with you folks, I would say spend your money on something else in your shop or spend your money on if you're invested in, in Milwaukee or uh, DeWalt, Rigid, Flex, whatever uh, Lowe's is, uh, Cobalt. Invest in, if you're already invested in it, keep buying those tools. That, that Those battery platforms are just getting better. Uh, the, the tool lineup's getting larger. Um, and these are not cheap. They, these are the premium price drills and impacts and I just don't see the added benefit of, of, of these versus anything else that I own. So let the comments fly. I'm ready for them, but um, I, and I'm not going to sell these. I'm going to keep them, but if I could go back in time, I wouldn't do it. That's my advice to anyone on the fence of buying a Festool drill or impact or not buying one. My advice would be don't do it unless it's a CXS. So with that, guys, I'm ready for it. Um, but until then, we will see you next time. Take care.